welcome to Bhutan uh, e-learning project key stage 5 classes 11 and 12 I Sita Maya Koirala geography teacher from Kelki higher secondary school would like you to take to the lesson energy resources let us share learn and grow together we have a topic today need to be covered first one definition of energy resources Differences between renewable and non-renewable energy resources. Differences between conventional and non-conventional energy resources. And finally, impact of hydropower plants in Bhutan. We'll start with the energy resources. You know what is energy? Energy is ability to do work or it is capacity to do work. You might have learned this in your lower classes, physics, right? So now we'll move to what is resources then. Resources is something that is ready to use when it is needed. Something is called as resources when it has three characteristics. Number one, it has utility, which means ready to use. Number two, accessibility, which means easy to get it. Number three, adequate, which means plenty or abundant in nature. Now let's put these two topic together and define what is energy resources. Anything that can be used as a source of energy is called as energy resources. Can you think of some example students? Solar energy can be the example of energy resources. Can I add some more to the lesson? Very good. Wind energy. The wind power which is harnessed to produce electricity is called as wind energy. Another example could be hydroelectricity. Energy which is derived from water force is called as hydroelectricity. Likewise, we have petroleum. The word petra means rock, oleum means oil. The rock which is derived from sedimentary rock is called as petroleum. Based on sources and utilization, energy resources can be classified into two. Number one, renewable energy resources. Number two, non-renewable energy resources. Now to go with renewable energy resources. Energy resources which can be renewed by the nature or which can be replenished by the nature is called as renewable energy resources. For example, solar energy, which we have discussed just before, can be the best example of renewable energy resources. In other hand, we have non-renewable energy resources, the energy which cannot be renewed by the nature or replenished by the nature. Can you think of one example, my dear students? It is natural gases, petroleum, coal, so on and so forth. Now let's look at the difference between these two, renewable and non-renewable energy resources. The first point for renewable resources is it can be used time and again. Whereas non-renewable, it can be used only once. Number two point could be renewable can be renewed by the nature, whereas non-renewable cannot be renewed by the nature. Renewable energy cannot be adjustable by constant use, which means you can use the renewable energy again and again. Non-renewable, it gets exhausted by constant use. The last point to be discussed on this particular topic, renewable energy resources are unlimited in nature, which means it is plenty in nature. Whereas non-renewable energy resources are limited in nature because it cannot be replaced by nature. Now, let us move to understand Conventional and non-conventional energy resources. Conventional energy resources are used from ancient time. And 
the traditional methods are used to obtain energy a trap energy non conventional energy resources are those which are used in a recent time and to get that energy the scientific knowledge is used how they are different with each other by looking at the photos conventional coal and fuel wood non conventional the solar energy now let's look at the differences between conventional energy resources and non conventional energy resources there are few points to be discussed the very first point is that conventional energy resources is used from ancient time whereas non conventional it is just used at recent time conventional energy resources are obtained by using the traditional method for example going to forest getting the firewood bring back home and use it whereas non conventional energy resources is obtained by using the scientific knowledge you just think of producing electricity by using hydropower plants or the water energy can be the best example of that the initial cost to set up the conventional energy resources is very cheap but it becomes expensive in the long run in other hand the initial cost for non conventional energy resources will be very expensive but it become cheaper in long run just think of setting up hydropower plant in the beginning it is very very expensive likewise it is very difficult to use the conventional energy resources you just think of coal which is so bulky whereas non conventional energy resources it is very easy to use think of hydroelectricity just switch on the button or the switch you get the electricity is so easy to use i'm quite sure you have understood what is um non conventional and conventional energy resources now my dear students we are going to move to the next topic that is hydroelectricity bhutan is very fortunate to have a mountain terrain and perennial flow of river perennial flow here means the continuous flow of river with a large volume these are two geographical condition which is very much necessary to generate hydroelectricity beside other factors now let us define what is hydroelectricity the production of electricity with the help of water force is called as hydroelectricity it is called as white gold in bhutan what is that white gold why it is very precious it earns lots of revenue for the government by exporting electricity to india you know that already and also it is very precious the water resources is very precious for bhutan my dear students it's in your hands in my hands it is in the hand of every citizen to preserve our water resources so that the continuous supply of water can be met for a long period of time now before we go into hydro electric power plant in detail it is very important for us to remember the major rivers of bhutan we have five major rivers in bhutan which is given in the map and the list are given there too the very first one is amachu Wangchu, Punachangchu, Drangmichu, and Badachu. Beside these major rivers, we have other rivers where we have hydropower plants. For example, Mangdichu in Tongsa, Chamkarchu in Bamtang, Kholongchu in Tashiangsi, Komachu in Linsi, likewise Kurichu in Mangar. So these are very precious rivers for Bhutan. to have the hydroelectricity in the country now let me begin with the brief history about hydroelectric power plant in the country 
the history of hydroelectricity in Bhutan started with the signing of Jal Dhaka agreement in between the country India and Bhutan or government of India and Bhutan in the year 1961. That was the beginning of hydropower plant in the country. In the year 1966, diesel motor was used to produce electricity in Funseling. Likewise, in 1967, first hydropower plant was set up at Simtoka in Thimpu with the generating capacity of 360 kilowatt of electricity. My dear students, please remember, it is just 360 kilowatt, not megawatt, okay? In the year 1968, the bordering Songkhaks, Samchi, Serpang, and Samdubzongkar were electrified by importing the electricity from Bengal and Assam. The first mega hydropower plant was set up in the country in the year 1988 and that is Chuka hydropower plant. So can you uh, all remember this? The first mega hydropower plant in the country is Chuka hydropower plant. Now I have a list of operational hydropower plant in the country. Let us look at the slide together. Are you all with me, my dear? Yes. Now let's look at the slide together and then read it together. But please read it slowly so that it is clear to all of us. Look at the table there. Chuka hydropower plant, which is located in the Wanchu River, and it was commissioned in the year 1988, and total production is 336 megawatt. Remember the word megawatt. That is the first hydropower plant in the country. Then Tala hydropower plant, which is the biggest hydropower plant in the country, which is also located in the same river, and it was commissioned in the year 2006 and with the total production capacity of 1020 megawatt, the biggest hydropower plant. Followed by Basa to lower phase. In Punachancho River, it was commissioned in 2005 with 40 megawatts. Basa to upper phase with 24 megawatts of electricity production. Kurichu is in Mongar, Kurichu River, which is commissioned in 2002 with the generating capacity 60 megawatt. Dagachu power plant in Dagaz, Dagana and Dagachu River, which was commissioned in 2015 with the generating capacity of 126 megawatt. Latest and the last hydropower plant which is operational in nature is Mangdechu hydropower plant which is in Tongsa Mangdechu River. Do you know that? Yes. It is the latest. It was just become operational last year August 2019 with the generating capacity of 180 megawatt. Now do you like to know the total production of electricity in the country my dear students? Yes, it is 1,786 megawatt. Yes. To move further, we have upcoming hydropower plants in the country. And this upcoming power plant can be shown in the map. You can revisit the map later on. But I'll just read it for you, which are the upcoming hydropower plants in the country. So should we read together again? First one. Kolong Chu with 600 megawatt generating capacity, which is in Tashi Yangtze. Chamgarsu, Bunaha, Wangcho, Kurigangri, Sunkos Project, Amachu, Punachangchu 1, and Punachangchu 2. I'm not going to stress more on the generating capacity because it is estimated it might change in a process of establishment or in the process of generating electricity. 
my dear students let us move on to remember this this is very important for you to remember hope you are going to jot down this in your notebook total water potential estimated is 30000 megawatt so huge but safe and exploitation water potential is just 16000 megawatts now total production if you remember the first slide which i shared with you all it is 1786 megawatt out of which just 105 megawatt is used for the domestic consumption now the market india is the sole market for exporting electricity for us so for that his majesty fourth drugalpo said water is to us what oil is to arab it means that the main revenue earned for bhutan is by exporting hydroelectricity to india likewise for the arab country the main source of revenue for them is by exporting oil that is the crude oil petroleum diesel kerosene so on and so forth so my dear students from this slide what you need to remember is that india is the sole market to export our hydroelectricity and which helps to earn revenue for the government okay now let us move on to understand the impact of hydropower plant in the country when i say impact here there are two impacts number one positive impacts and number two negative impacts by having the hydroelectricity we have so many advantages or positive impacts for the country number one hydroelectricity does not emit pollution any type of pollutant on the land in the water and in the atmosphere number two points running water is renewable in nature if we can take care of the forest resources then we can manage water and water can be easily renewed by the nature so that the continuous supply can be ensured number three point we can use this energy constantly which means time and again for the domestic purpose as well as for the industrial purpose when we have positive impact at the same time we have some negative impacts number one point is that it is very expensive to set up hydropower plant is very expensive number two when we set up hydropower plant in the country it leads to environmental destruction for example deforestation landslides soil erosion are the example of destruction caused to the natural environment likewise there will be huge disturbance in the downstream river environment there will be disturbance in the ecosystem on the land as well as in the water now i have listened closer let us recapitulate once more the main topics today we have discussed about energy resources anything which is a source of energy is called as energy resources we do discuss about the renewable and non renewable energy resources we have discussed about conventional as well as non conventional energy resources and finally we have discussed about the impact of hydropower plant in the country now i have three questions for you all so these are the questions the first question is what are the alternative source of energy resources beside water resources question number 2 how is establishment of hydropower plant leads to destruction of energy resources question number 3 on the outline map of bhutan look at the operational hydropower plants of bhutan thank you so much for attending my lesson